Hello YouTube, I'm David with the David West channel. Well today I wanted to show you uh, three fire making ways to use ashes, wood ashes. Any wood ashes will do. There's nothing special about the type of wood that you burn down into ashes. This is just what I happen to have in my hobo stove at the time. The three ways we're going to explore today is going to be ashed, tender, Rudiger roll, and grip on your hands to help grip a hand drill spindle. So let's go ahead and start off with ash tender. Now I haven't worked with jute in such a long time, let's go ahead and use it. And I'm going to impregnate this with ashes. And then we'll solar ignite it with my Wallet Fresnel lens and bring it back and put it in one of our pine needles bird's nest or tinder bundles. Now I think I can get away with not having to break this down into its separate fibers. When we do the Rudiger roll, we will have to we will have to uh, break it down. So let's ball this up. Saturate it really good with ashes. Let me get this out of my wallet before I get my hands all ashed up. Wallet for now lens. You can get a three pack on Amazon. I think it's $8. Uh, but make sure you get the, the three packs that has these green envelopes. They're the ones that I use. And yes, there's cracks in this one from being in my wallet, but that doesn't that doesn't influence the way it works. It still still ignites very well, concentrates photons beautifully. Now, any tinder that you saturate with ashes like this will turn that tinder into a coal extender. And that's basically what we're going to do. We'll spend a little bit of time with the focal point on this tinder. It'll catch that spark very easily and it'll just continue to make it grow and grow and intensify. The jute on its own wouldn't do that. It's only because we've added the ashes to it. Now if you're going to stare at a focal point for more than like 30 seconds, you want to put your shades on. But this shouldn't take over 30 seconds just to get it started. If I was to sit that on the table because there's, it's saturated with ashes, it would just sit there and completely burn up. I gotta get my hobo stove over here too.
You know, I've been trying to tell people the virtues of ash tender for years now, and people just haven't realized. Now, with ash tender, you can do things that you never could do before. When you put ashes in a tender, it will go ahead and catch the weakest of sparks and go ahead and grow that, intensify that spark. So, it's starting to catch on. And I just have some pine needles here. I roughed up some for the center and I got some unprocessed ones uh, for a handle in the center. And if I need to, I'll put, a, put some of these powdery ones up on top. These are new pine needles. They still have some moisture in them. All right. Now, on the Rudiger roll, also known as fire roll. We will have to disassemble this, take all these fibers apart, break them down into as small of fibers as we can for it to be, to get an easy ignition. All right, let's add some ashes and roll it up. I used to just put ashes on a third of it, but I like putting it on the whole length of fiber. So that's a change I've made since I first started. I've got 60 fire roll, also known as Rudiger roll videos. So. If you want more information on this technique, I've got the videos. You'll always want to keep track of which way you have this setting down. Now this pointy end right here I know goes to the left. I've actually seen people online take and accidentally this roll will stick to the top board and they'll accidentally throw it on the, on the ground and when they pick it up they lay it back on the board 180 degrees out, which is the unraveling position. So try to always remember which side is it's supposed to be oriented on. And this pointy side is going to be to the left if mine falls off the table. Uh, the reason I'm doing it on this board is because this board is soaking wet. forward strokes to tighten it up and when you feel it's tight enough to withstand the rolling process then you'll go for it. If you don't see smoke quickly go back and roll it some more.
I'm gonna try to get the I'm gonna try to get the ignited part to ignite the unignited part. And I'll put this process bundle in back inside the pine needles. Just a little handle of sorts. They put a little bit of powder on top of it. All right, three tries with the golden rod and the poplar fireboard is enough. Let's switch over to the mullen and a poplar fireboard. And we'll try it right here. See if this is gonna work better for us today. <laughs> Here we go again. Well, I hate to show you this, but my mullen and my poplar fireboard didn't work either. Board all the way through it. This board is very soft. So I'm going to try my secret weapon, my best set, my best fireboard, and my best hand drill. Hold on, let me set this aside. Back to the good old faithful horse weed. and short leaf pine fireboard. This should work. There shouldn't be any problem with this. Let's give it a try. And like I said, ashes for grip. I had to go take a break. I guess I tried four or five times already, so I had to have a break. All right, let's do the burn-in. So far, so good. <laughs> I think this one's going to work. And I still have plenty of ashes on my spindle, plenty of ashes on my hands. It's a very humid day. I don't think we have ignition.
That's what it is. It's all the humidity. Oh, we got ignition. Finally. That was about, with all the different spindles and fireboards, that was about eight tries. If this stuff was easy, everybody would be able to do it. All right, y'all. That's three different ways to use ashes to help you make fire. I am so glad that I'm able to utilize the first two segments because we finally made the last segment work. Thanks for joining me on this one. We'll catch you on the next one.